There's a long, slow climb from the river to the village, mostly wooded and grazing land, until the church suddenly fills your eyes. It's a pretty village, and is kept that way by proud villagers and the regular liquor pains. Built on a dip in the hillside, the village benefits from its protection. The hill moves down to a point where river, road and magnificent railway viaducts, all forever grit stone, come together to cross the valley at its narrowest point. Leaving the village to the south, the path crosses the summit of the hill where the Wimbrae and Trambrae constantly swing and sway in the wind. The Northerlies can be business, business sorry. The Northerlies can be, be fierce, so much so that with a combined moor and fire, such wind shaved off the peaty topsoil. And now, even hundreds of years later, Stone Age tools are still being discovered. Harry, Jimmy and Jeff were typical lads of the village. They knew <coughs> where the tawny albuster, where the crayfish hunted, which sticks burnt green and which were best for bows and arrows, and which metal rail moved just enough to give access to the murky darkness of the divers. Towards the end of the village, the lane is flat, neither up nor down. There's an ancient alder which the stone brought down a few years earlier. New growth, strong and dense, had sprouted, growing around the edges of the stump until a year or so later, when the ancient and heavy gatepost next to it was hit by a lorry and toppled into its final resting place. It was into this cavity that the boys crept quiet and still. They didn't have so long to wait for the jingling of the harness and the clip-clop of hooves. Three minutes later, Larry, the milkman, came from the left and parked his milk float opposite. He jumped off the float in a little more eagerly than a couple of full fat and a semi-skin warranted. As he approached Mrs Foster's garden, her path, the door opened and closed again. Having taken a quick look up and down and checked that the horse was contentedly grazing on the roadside grass. Galvanising into action on the click of Mrs. Foster's door catch, Harry was at the horse's head in an instant, gently stroking his velvet muzzle and making comforting, reassuring noises to keep him quiet. Hercules. Well, that was his beast's name, a friendly animal and fond of company. Watched with amusement, enjoying the attention and the breaking routine. Jeff and Jimmy also galvanised into action. One each side took off the horse's harness, all of it. Leaving the float, it was. Leaving the float where it was. They carefully walked Hercules around in full circle, a clip flop of his hoofs threatening to betray them, and then reinserted him into the shafts of the float, replacing bridle, belly band, binary hook and collar. Everything perfectly placed with Hercules pointing the wrong way. All three boys then legged it back across the road to their hiding hole, stifling laughter, to wait for Larry the milkman to, to, re, to reappear. 